What an epic journey yesterday was. We left the Kruger National Park at first light. Um, you can only leave the camps at the Kruger National Park at 6 a.m. Um, so they only open up the gates at first light. They don't want people driving around in the Kruger National Park at night for obvious reasons. Uh, it's it's uh, puts the animals in danger driving at night. You do not see them coming across the road. So we patiently waited for the gates to open and headed off towards the border post. Uh, the border opens up at eight o'clock, uh, the Griyondo border. And when we got to the border post, just, just after eight, after seeing the beautiful sighting of the cheetah and the leopard, um, we then crossed the border hassle-free and started our, what normally would be 600 kilometer, seven to eight hour journey, uh, obviously with us filming and stopping all the time, uh, turned out to closer to a 12 hour journey. So really long day. I don't like driving at night. Unfortunately, the last hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes ended up being in, in the dark. And the last tracks getting to Pandane, where we are right now, um, it's a really bad tar road very, very narrow. You still have lorries on that. Once we got off that and onto the dirt track and onto the single track, absolutely no issues because that you can drive at night, no worries. You don't have issues with that. The single track, I will definitely be filming during the daylight. Uh, the devastation that we could see last night with a, tro with a tropical cyclone that came through here, palm trees chopped in half. It's it just devastating to see what uh, or oh, amazing and awesome on the other side and see what nature, the power of nature. Anyways, we've arrived. We're going to be staying in one of the eight bedroom um, bungalows that are available for you here uh, for a couple of nights. And then we're going to move down to the camp area and camp for a couple of evenings. Just waking up early in the morning and seeing the spectacular sunrise over the in Indian Ocean is well worth the long trip. And a uh, couple of pointers that I want to do to mention this morning. Crossing the border, number one, make sure that you've got a folder, nothing can fall out, all your documents. If you're presenting this, I believe presenting a doc of a folder like this with your passports in it, your vehicle registration, all your non-objection letters, so on and so forth, in this format they already know that you're organized and you're and, and and i believe your border crossing will go a lot easier instead of just ruffling through papers and so on and so forth what i would also recommend and what we didn't know yesterday is exchanging money now generally i would take money and fold it and stick it into my pocket like this what I suggest you do for, to exchange for Meticas is take, take your money, put it in your folder and keep it straight because you cannot exchange money once it's had a fold. Uh, didn't know this, useful tip. So when you're drawing your USD or your South African Rand and changing it into Meticas, don't fold it and stick it in your wallet. Take your folder that you're using for all your documentation, stick it in nice and neat, keep it straight and crisp. And that's the only way you're going to exchange money. They ruffled through the money that I wanted to exchange for fuel um, for the trip. And they gave me back a whole lot that now uh, I can still use the rands, but my exchange rate will be far less um, than exchanging it in the banks. Now, there are other options available. I don't condone you going into the guys of street hawkers and so on to change money. But if you are in this situation where I am right now, where I folded my money and I would say 50% of it couldn't get exchanged, I'm now going to have to look and chat to one of the hawkers to exchange the, the rands into Meticas. Like I said, you can use rands, but you do get you get a very weak exchange rate when trying to put fuel in 
or when trying to haggle with uh, the local fishermen to get fish, crayfish, so on and so forth. So I would suggest that you change it into local currency, utilize the local currency and that way you can barter or ha haggle your price down a lot easier. I'm going to do one heck of a big cook up for you. Thank you to Etienne, Kathy, little Cami and little Pippa for enduring the long trip, the additional five hours that we spent in the cars yesterday while we were stopping and filming and stopping and filming so that we could bring you the footage of the trip. I'm going to go and do a big bacon eggs and then greet them with a cup of coffee. I see the kiddies are up right now but greet them with a cup of coffee and, and say thanks for that. Today, we're not going to do much traveling today. I think the entire crew is pretty tired. We'll go down to the local beach, to Pandani Beach, and I'll show you what that is. Apparently, this has got the best reef on the east coast of Mozambique, so I'm told. Let's go and have a look at that, do some snorkeling. Hopefully, the weather holds up. I see the wind is coming up a bit right now, but hopefully the weather holds up and we can spend a lovely day on the beach recharging the batteries. And then tomorrow, start exploring the area in and around Inyamban. Um, there's some great sites. Uh, Lee and Andre, the owners of, of Pandani, are, are kind enough to help us out with all the tourist attractions that are here. We're also using Tracks for Africa. I would suggest that you download Tracks for Africa coming into any of... It works really well on the East Africa side, but mostly Southern Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, um, South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland. It works exceptionally well. Um, but uh, we've got lucky enough that we've got the locals over here that will give us all the best sites and bring them to you.